This presentation will be about the output of design research projects, what design research actually produces, and we'll see that it produces both artifacts and knowledge about these artifacts. This slide shows the overall process for design research, and it indicates that in the end we should produce some artifact. It should also be an evaluated artifact, so we know how good it really is, how well it is able to solve the problem, and whether it fulfills the requirements defined. Design research can produce different kinds of artifacts. It can be physical artifacts, such as medical drugs or ventilators or respirators. It could also produce models, such as an architecture for an electronic health record system or a model for interoperability of information. Or it could produce different methods, for example, for designing interfaces or methods for treating various diseases. But isn't there something problematic about this figure? It only says that design research should produce artifacts. And so where is the knowledge in all of this? We said earlier that design research also should produce knowledge, but here we're only talking about these artifacts. So it something seems to be wrong here. And of course, Design research shouldn't produce only artifacts. It should produce knowledge about the artifacts, about their structure and environment, about the anatomy and context of the artifacts. More precisely, design research should produce knowledge about practice and problem requirements, structure, function, quality, and effects, not only the artifact itself. Knowledge about an artifact includes knowledge about the practice in which it is to be used, uh, in particular about the purpose of that practice and which are the main activities and who are the participants. You should also describe the practical problem that triggers the design of this artifact, uh, explain why this problem is important and significant, and clarify for whom, for which stakeholders, this problem is a problem, who experiences the problem. You should also describe requirements on the artifact, that is properties that the artifact should possess so that it can address the problem. So the requirements should be justified by relating them to the problem. And you should also provide an overall description of the artifact itself, in particular its structure and functions. And you should also clarify how the artifact is to be used in practice if there are special procedures for using it. You should also provide an evaluation of the artifact that is describing its quality and effects clarify how well the artifact fulfills the requirements and to what extent it solves the practical problem. And you should furthermore describe the effects of using the artifact, in particular side effects that are unintended and possibly harmful. Okay, let us try to apply this template for an example of a respirator. The respirator is a device that protects someone from inhaling dangerous stuff like dust or airborne microorganisms. Please have a look at this definition from Wikipedia. And then before proceeding to the next slide, please also look at this short video and then try to apply the template from the previous page for the respirator and outline a uh, description of it using practice and problem requirements and artifact and quality and effects. And then you can have a look at some kind of solution in the next slide. 
Well, here I have applied the template to this case of the respirator. Please take a couple of minutes and read what it says here. And while you're doing so, please also think about what kind of knowledge is it that is included here. Uh, in particular, is it only descriptions of stuff or is it something more or something different than only descriptions? Okay, first we should say something about the practice in which the artifact will be used. And this is essentially about descriptions. We describe this practice, especially its purpose and the activities carried out there and the people who are active in that practice. Then we have the problem. This is also very much about descriptions. We describe the practical problem to be addressed. But there can also be explanatory knowledge in the sense that we should describe the causes of the problem and we should also explain why the problem is important. So here we go a bit beyond simple, straightforward our descriptions and also add on justifications and explanations. And moving to requirements, these are also a lot of descriptions which simply list the different requirements, but there is also explanatory knowledge that clarify why these requirements are relevant, how they are related to the problem. And then we have the artifact that is also mainly descriptive knowledge. We describe the structure of the artifact, its uh, parts, its components, and how they are related. But there is also some prescriptive knowledge here in the sense that we should tell how the artifact is to be best used in the practice, how we should go about in order to use it in an effective way. And finally, we have quality and effects. This is also to a large extent descriptive knowledge, but there is also some predictive knowledge where we specify what will happen in terms of effects when we use the artifact, what will happen in the future, we predict that. So in summary, we can see that the design research produces not only the artifact, but a lot of knowledge around the artifact, about the artifact. And we can also see that there are many different kinds of knowledge that is produced. And in the next presentation, we will go deeper into these different knowledge types.